All of the problems I work through in my videos can be downloaded from accountingworkbook.com. If you'd like a copy for yourself, just click the PDF link and you can download a copy to your computer. Also found on the website are links to all of my accounting videos, not just the ones here on YouTube that are publicly listed. They're also members only videos. About 40% of my videos are free and open. The other 60% are for members. If you click one of the members links, it'll take you to a page that looks like this, says members only content. If you'd like access to that content, just hit the join button. Okay, let's jump into the problem. Let's examine problem 12-1A, a make or buy decision, one of the most important decisions we'll make in chapter 12. Imagine you're a restaurant and you're debating, do you order your cheesecake from the local cheesecake shop or do you make it yourself and enjoy those juicy margins for yourself? It's a dilemma that companies face all kinds of places, all kinds of businesses have to decide, do they bring something in from the outside or do they just make it themselves, fabricate it or, or bake it <laughs> in the case of a, a cheesecake in house? That's the dilemma to outsource or not to outsource. And here's a nice example of such a decision. We're going to use relevant costs, remembering that to be relevant, a cost cannot be sunk and it has to be different across the options. So let's jump into it. Carol's Cupcakes sells cupcakes and other desserts through its retail store. The company has always made all of its ingredients from scratch, but has recently been approached by a supplier that specializes in icing. Carol believes that the supplier's icing is of equal quality to her own. That's very important. Of course, it was a lower quality than, doesn't matter the financial dilemma. It's like, it's bad icing. We're not going to use it. But she believes it's of good quality and believes their offer of $3 per liter may enable her to save money. Carol's evaluating her own cost of producing ice cream. So her cost per liter, as you can see there, is $4.50. Uh, the supplier's cost is $3. And there's the dilemma, right? Well, it looks like maybe some money savings are to be had uh, for Carol if she accepts the supplier's icing. Examining the report, Carol says, their icing is just as good and it would save me $1.50 per liter. Uh, that's over $7,500 per year. I think I'm gonna take the deal. Now, of course, when we read this as an accounting student, somebody feels pretty sure they're gonna do something. We're gonna crunch some numbers and we're gonna tell them not to. Uh, I don't know if that's the case in this question, but that's just sort of how I read things when I read an accounting question and somebody seems sure of themselves or sure they're going one way, we're gonna read the numbers differently and tell them to go the other way, us genius accountants. Uh, let's see if uh, we're gonna set Carol straight or not. Assuming there is no other use for the icing equipment or the space it uses in the kitchen, what's the dollar advantage or disadvantage of accepting the supplier's offer? This is a relevant cost dilemma. Again, if a cost is sunk or it's not different between the alternatives, we won't consider that. We're only going to consider the costs that are not sunk and different between the alternatives. So let's get to it. I like to lay this out as a make versus buy. I like to sort of put buy stuff on the right and make stuff on the left. And the buy stuff is the easiest. It's just the price. It's going to cost us $3 per liter. There's no additional maybe shipping cost or something like that. There's nothing like that considered here. So it's just the purchase price. And of course, the purchase price, if I make, is zero. I'm not purchasing it from an outside supplier. If I buy, is $3. They are differential. It is not sunk. I haven't bought it yet, so of course it's not a sunk cost. This absolutely is relevant to our decision. Now, the costs of making, also, many of them are relevant. And direct material is almost always relevant because I haven't made the icing yet. I mean, I'm making icing now, but uh, you know, for the cupcake I make in two months, I haven't made that icing yet. Uh, so that $1 is a relevant cost. Uh, and of course, it, because it's not sunk and it's different from buy. If I buy, I'm not going to buy the direct materials for icing. I, I don't have to buy icing sugar any longer, right? So that is relevant. I also don't have to pay my cook to make icing. So that 50 cents, to, I mean, I'm certainly paying my chef for my you know, kitchen staff, uh, and I'll continue to employ them, but they just, I'm not going to pay them to make icing anymore. So that 50 cents is relevant because again, if I make, it costs me 50 cents. If I buy, I'm not paying anybody to make icing any longer. Um, variable overhead also tends to be relevant. 
Again, how many units worth of icing am I making? Well, none. So the machinery, you know, the electricity that goes into making that icing, it doesn't cost me anything anymore. It had previously cost me 25 cents. Doesn't cost me anything if I buy. So these are all savings. Fixed overhead is where we get into costs that might not be relevant and certainly require closer inspection. It says fixed overhead traceable, a dollar, and there's a little asterisk. 40% relates to cleaning and maintenance. Okay, that's going to be relevant because if I buy, I'm not doing any cleaning and maintenance on my icing equipment. If I make, I got to do cleaning and maintenance on my icing equipment. So that 40 cents, 40% 40 of a dollar, that 0 0.40 is relevant. Oh, I don't know if that's clear enough, but anyway, that 40 cents, my goodness, maybe I got to change my pen. It's too thick. There we go. That 40 cents is going to be relevant. What about the other 60 cents? Well, I'm leaning towards not relevant because I've identified this as relevant, but let's, let's see. 60% uh, relates to depreciation of the icing equipment with no resale value. Okay, I bought the equipment at some point in the past. This is a sunk cost. Also, the depreciation is not different across alternatives, so it's another reason to consider it not relevant because, you know, if I if I buy, I still have this equipment. I'm not going to be able to sell it. I, I just have to depreciate it the same. So it's not different, but it's also a sunk cost would be the main reason. I've already bought the equipment. So uh, not rel. So the relevant cost, the relevant fixed overhead traceable, let's go back to my normal pen size here, fixed overhead traceable the relevant amount of that was 40 cents because I, if I make, I got to clean and maintain the machines. If I buy, I do not. Now again, the depreciation didn't count. Fixed overhead allocated, and you're going to see this in this chapter a lot, the word allocated. If it's allocated, nine times out of 10, it is not relevant. What is an allocated cost? Think of it as like rent cost. So this person pays rent, and she allocates some of that cost to making cupcakes, some to making icing, whatever. It's, it's, it's a cost that even if we stop uh, whatever product we're making or whatever you know icing in this case that we're making, we still have to pay the rent. It's just an allocated cost that exists within the company. So uh, in this case, we're saying that is not relevant. Again, allocated is generally a sign that we're headed to not relevant land, and that certainly is the case here. So adding this up, the buy option costs us $3. The make option for relevant costs costs us $2.15. And these are the relevant costs. So $2.15 versus $3. Uh, I save, or Carol saves, not me. Carol saves. 85 cents, you know, just the difference there, per liter if she continues to make icing. Um, what was the question, though? What is the net dollar advantage or disadvantage of accepting the supplier's offer? Oh, so we actually need an overall here, and how, how many 5,000 liters, so... 85 cents per liter, oops, 0 0.85 per liter times 5,000 is 0.85 times 5,000, 42.50. And she's 42.50 better off if she makes, but it didn't ask that. It said, how much better or worse off is she if she accepts the supplier's offer? Well, if she accepts the supplier's offer, it's 42.50 worse. So the net dollar and this is a disadvantage of accepting the offer is 4250 she's 4250 worse off if she accepts the offer that's what we've answered there okay let's read on b if the offer is accepted, Carol's Cupcakes could use the space that had been previously used for making icing as a bacon frying space. Carol believes that a new bacon line of cupcakes would produce margins of $5,000 per year. Should she accept the offer? Okay, well, we just said uh, accepting 
is 4250 worse than making so if accepting now gets five thousand dollars better which is what's happening if we accept the offer we get this extra five thousand dollar boost well all of a sudden it goes from 4250 worse but it gets a five thousand dollar boost from the bacon cupcakes where are we now well negative 4250 is 4250 worse but now it gets five thousand dollars better we are now seven hundred and fifty dollars better to buy so if we're able to use this space to make these bacon muffins we don't have to worry about our icing equipment anymore there's room to fry bacon and if we make the bacon we're going to be five thousand dollars improvement well you know what it becomes better off in this scenario to buy so again we had a disadvantage of 4250 by buying but now we're going to use that space that option got five thousand dollars better than it had been so it's seven hundred and fifty dollars better to buy all right i hope this video has helped and for goodness sakes if it has helped you please i'm begging you please help me please consider whoop, over there uh, there please consider liking or subscribing to this channel have an awesome day everybody bye for now